Hey everybody, it's Dick here. I've been taking advantage of the blustery days we've had here in late September London and looking more closely at how I can make the Mutt a bit more of a usable member of the fleet. I've been doing a couple of school runs on it, some errands on it. I went and visited one of my interview subjects on it and I do enjoy riding it and I'm going to try and make this into a dual sport. What I'm going to do is do a number of videos as we modify this into a bit of a Mad Max don't care if I drop it machine. As it is, if I was to do any more, I don't know if Fanny knows about the divot there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she doesn't because it's nice and low when you're standing up and looking at it. But if I don't do anything to the bike as it is and I bring it out even for a day of green laning with radar, it's going to come back with some road rash and with some damage. So I'm going to get some protection on it, change some of the more precious parts that will show damage, and hopefully also make it a bit more appropriate to having Tiddy, Dicky, and eventually Tootie learning to ride motorcycles. There's a number of issues that arise from mutt ownership that we have not dealt with, mostly because this is not our primary bike and we don't ride it on a daily basis, and I don't think we've run it enough in terms of the timeline of, of achieving those milestones of headaches in ownership of a mutt. One of the headaches is the electrics that deal with the indicators. This is uh, one of the later LED ones, but I know the early mongrels, everyone's always popped the seat and is dealing with some sort of electrical issue with the indicators. One of the chief issues arises from the side stand kill switch, and that is very vulnerable. And with the movement of a side stand, whenever you wrench wires and fixtures and fittings, you're going to have an issue with connectivity. It being exposed there in terms of a trail riding or a green laning situation, especially the rocky stuff that radar brings me on, that is a concern to me. Or if I just have to be ultra aware of that and hope, hoping that this and my boot <laughs> will protect this from any sort of damage. I bought some engine bars for the MASH 79 or 72 or whatever version whatever they're calling their version of this. Unfortunately, the instructions weren't available online. They weren't that expensive, but now that I have them here, I see that they bolt in on that bolt there, but my bash plate is in the way for that mounting bolt there. So either I have to figure out how to modify the bash plate so that can slide in between there, or I have to choose between an engine guard or a bash plate. So I'm being a bit stubborn about having this bash plate and these engine bars at the same time. It's gonna take some modification of the bash plate and I've done some measurements and it looks like I'm gonna to have to cut out this section here because of the holes that have been drilled for weight savings or air circulation or whatever the hell these holes are for, I have to be careful. My initial thought was just cut and pull out this section between these holes. Use these holes as entry points. Cut across there, cut down there, cut across there, and have that big hole there. Initially, that didn't seem too big of an issue. However, this is the only bolt on the whole front end. The only other two bolts are back here. So it leaves quite a little bit of material, this spine holding up all of that front end of the bash plate, which means it's, it's vulnerable to some sort of damage. My other initial thought was to come straight down here, cut across to that open line, and cut up there and cut out kind of a U shaped here. My issue with that is that that would leave that would leave this kind of hanging plate here. So if anything hit here hard enough, it would send this plate into there. Even though that's not a lot of material that I can leave on either side, it's still a bit more material if I cut out its own hole, leaving as much material as I can around these existing holes and leaving that bit of metal along the top. Hopefully the position of this will protect this quadrant of bash plate from anything too powerful that will snap what material I've left. So I'm gonna see if I can just remove that bit of material there enough so that this can slot in against the frame and I can have 
the best of both worlds. Two 10 millimeter bolts at the back. I'm working on a slotted deck. I have lost stuff between these slots before. One at the front. So, kind of a rubber bung there, similar to what you'd find on a side panel. These two are perished, but there we are. So this is the section I'm going to need to cut out on either side. Huh. I don't know if it's just the rubber bung that's off-center, but that looks asymmetric to me. I hope that's not... Yeah, okay. That hole is asymmetric. So that's going to make my measurements for the frame quite interesting. So it's not 2008 anymore, so I spared you the video of me grinding the two cuts I made on the first side of the bash plate. But you can see I've made initial cuts on the measured parts of the bash plate. The grinder jumped on me a bit there, and I tried to do a cross cut there, but I caught the plate there. But I'm going to neaten all that up and respray this when I'm done. But I have the two initial cuts here. So I got out the Dremel tool and was very patient with my <laughs> cutting discs. And I cut the short discs off there and finished off the edges and I have a dry fit now of the engine guards. And I've made two holes for the engine guards to go and mount to the frame there. And then these will go up like that on either side. Now I can have the best of both worlds with the engine guards and the bash plate. And I'm gonna get the Dremel out again, polish up these edges, clean off all the grease, and then respray it. But I am quite pleased with that resolution. That, I think, is the trickiest part of this mutt to dual sport conversion. Though I do think the handlebar guards are going to be a bit tricky with the length of the stock levers. But I think this is the most amount of grinding and cutting that I'll have to do. <laughs> Knock on wood. So here's my homemade backyard spray booth with all of the Amazon boxes. I have finished grinding the access holes for the engine guards to fit through. I did a little rudimentary filing on them and now I'm spraying them with some high temp heat resistant durable overcoat. I end up using a Dremel style tool to do the shortcuts across the top and the bottom. The cutting wheel on my grinder was too long. I was able to do the long cuts but those shortcuts meant I was catching either side of this curved section of the plate. So I just got a bunch of these cutting wheels and was very patient and it was the perfect size to cut what I needed. So I'm going to install the engine guards and the bash plate. When I was respraying the bash plate I couldn't find my bailing wire so I actually just used a bit of vine that was growing in the back garden and it worked a treat. These are the bolts that came with the engine guards. These are the bolts that go on to the bash plate. The problem is the bash plate isn't actually mounted directly to the frame or the engine, it's, there's a subframe. The funny thing is, or the problem is, is that this subframe is what is holding the bash plate on. It doesn't mount right to the frame or the engine. So these tabs holding on the subframe for the bash plate on either side make the additional length bolt that they sent for the engine guards still too short to run all of those together. So I went on a search and I found longer bolts and I'm banking on that being long enough. I'm hoping it's long enough but not too long that the threads actually make it all the way through. But we're gonna check it out right now and see. So I have to loosely attach the bash plate so I can still snake the engine guards 
through the new holes that I've drilled for them. But I still have to be able to get behind the bash plate to tighten the bolt. So that's the original bolt. It came from the factory. It's a longer bolt that came with the engine guards. And that's the bolt that I have to try and resolve all the extra material there. So that's the extra I have. It's funny, this is a 120 millimeter bolt. The 110 would have been too short. The 130 way too long. I don't think that sticks out too far. It's a bit unsightly, but it's gonna be workable. Bash plate and engine guards. If you like that video and you want to see more like them, hit like, share, and subscribe.